you go to dental school. I went to dental school. Let me tell you, pretty tough. You get out, you work in the real world of dentisting. Also fairly tough. And you want to buy a practice. Your dream, owning your own practice. And cannot having disability stop you from owning that practice. Today, we're going to talk with my friends, key resources and sponsors, uh, Jim and Tyler of Doctors Disability Specialists. And they're going to share with you a scary story for awareness. The more aware you are, the better you can do in life. So welcome to Talking Nachos, Jim and Tyler. Share with our group, for those who have not met you, what you guys do to help dentists and a little bit about this scary awareness story. Well, thanks for having us, Paul. Dr. Nacho, good to see you. Good to see um, you guys. So, you know, I, I think a lot of your, your uh, group may know, you know, we've been in the disability insurance space for 13 years now, and our specialty is working with dentists, essentially helping them insure their, their hands and their back and, uh, you know, protect them. Um, and we had a recent story that I think your group can certainly benefit from. And so for this person, it wasn't a good story, but uh, for the rest of your group, they may be able to learn. Uh, Jim, do you want to share the story? Sure. No, thanks, Tyler. Yeah. And, uh, hi, Paul. Nice to see How's you again. going, Jim? Good seeing Good. You. Going great. Yeah. So um, we uh, had a, 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 a client approach us. We actually approached them in dental school and talked with them about potentially getting some disability insurance. They decided to wait, to hold off because... Um, who knows the reason? Sometimes it's cash flow. Sometimes it's just, you know, just maybe I'll never need it. Uh, well, in this case, uh, they a couple of years later called us and said, "Hey, we want to buy a practice. The the bank is asking us where our disability insur insurance policy might be." And so uh, we said, "Well, happy to help." So we went through the process of getting them underwritten and looking at uh, some different policies. And uh, during the underwriting process, lo and behold, uh, the company and uh, we ex we exhausted our our options, but uh, the companies said, uh, thank you, but no thank you. We do not want to take the risk of insuring um, uh, this Because person. this, they may have some risk factor, some pre-existing condition, something that the insurance says, nah, we're not interested in insuring you. In this case, this dentist, and I help sell practices, I know you guys do, it's a process, right? Looking at the practice, LOI, due diligence, doing all this. But the bank is like your mom as a kid. Nothing happened without your mom. And if the bank has to give you money, you need that money from the bank. So this Dentist, this is a story for awareness. Not every story is about unicorns and rainbows like I watched with my two-year-old. Some stories are for awareness are this dentist trying to realize his or her dream is now being stopped, paused, because this dentist didn't act in dental school and get disability insurance. So this is something that can happen out there where insurance will refuse to insure you. Is that accurate? Completely accurate. And they were insurable in dental school, but they're not insurable now. So um, that's... Uh, we it do was have in the last some... six months, you know, that, that something had come up, but, you know, it could have sabotaged, I think, their ability to buy a practice. Luckily, we had relationships with their bank and got them to make it a post-closing requirement. And we're going to go through this bunch of hoops of guaranteed issue group disability, which has really, really lousy actual contractual language, but it will at least check the box for the bank. Get them there. Uh, so it's a creative but... way to solve the problem, but not the ideal way to solve the no, problem. Correct. A little bit like this, when it's raining and you say to someone, does anyone have an umbrella? It's too late for the umbrella. Yeah. You say, I got my umbrella in the door. So this is what disability insurance is like. So I like to have these scary awareness stories. So what do you guys, what I like to share with my audience, because maybe someone's watching this now, five years from now. First, I also want to thank you guys for this awesome uh, Dr. Disability Specialist uh, uh, softball jersey. I got my patch on here. Bring mine too. So, yeah, yeah. We, yeah. So, we included, so yeah. We included Thanks, the, I appreciate the nachos. that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, uh, nachos are going to take the, take the country by storm with this. Uh, so I appreciate that very much. You guys are fun guys. But you do stuff that's, you know, I don't want to say it's not fun, but it also, it talks about stuff that we don't want to happen, have happened. So what do you do? Walk me through. I'm a dental student. I'm like, I see this. I want to get disability insurance. How do we reach out to you and tell us a little bit of the process? So the first thing I'll say is that the purchasing behavior of whatever it is that we buy, it's, it's, it's different with disability. You know, normally in life, if we want to buy a cup of coffee or an iPad, we'll just go to the store and do it. And I think people have the same approach with disability that I'll get it next year, I'll get it the year after. It's not that simple. You know, the odds of a dentist getting disabled aren't low and the companies want to think about them more than the client wants to think about the company. Right. Um, so just, you know, keep that in mind that it's never going to be cheaper and easier to get while you're in dental school and, you know, try to get it done sooner rather than later. Um, but the process is like a medical audition, really. They get your blood, your urine, your medical records. It's a big to-do called underwriting. But the benefit, though, is when people are young and healthy, you can get really superior 
pricing and contract language. And as the years click by, it becomes difficult to get. And I mean, that's, that's why JFO, just find out now, no matter where you are. I say this to my, dent, my dental patients. So they get overwhelmed, cost a lot of money, all this stuff. I'm like, you do have that fancy car. Like, pay no attention to the fancy car. But <laughs> I, I, I say, I, it's like the Wizard of Oz. Pay no attention to all these other things I spend money on, right? I don't want to buy your implant. But I say, your dental care is never less money, less time, less hassle than it is now. Same with disability. So if you're watching and say, oh, geez, I never got it. You still can get it now reach out to Jim and Tyler. You can email us at salsadentalnachos.com. We have a landing page that we'll drop in, in the chat here. But when you apply for this as a dental student, they run you through an underwriting process. Now, what happens later if I want to increase my disability, Jim? You know, and I've already been approved. Is that an easy process or a hard one? It's typically easy. Uh, so we include uh, riders on policies when we can, uh, where you don't have to go through the medical audition again. Uh, so it's basically a little paperwork. We, we do like to do annual check-ins, if not more frequent, uh, to make sure that people are current with their plans. But uh, it's really as simple as uh, you know, electronic signature on a page and then uh, just proving your income is warranting uh, a raise, so to speak, or an increase in your disability plan. So it's appropriate if you're listening to this and your dentist five years out, 10 years out, to check in with you guys and make sure yes. that their disability policy has kept up with their income because maybe their dental school policy was based on making $80,000 a year and now they're making five times as much as that. Is that something you see, Tyler, frequently in your guys' industry? Yeah, you know, their disability stays the same. Their income goes up, not just their income, but their liabilities and it becomes less relevant over time. And it's easier to forget about because let's face it, it's a boring topic. Right. You know, insurance is the, the most boring thing ever. Um, yeah. And you're just, you know, and, paying for stuff you never want to need, you never want to use. It's just always a challenge. But you've invested all this time, all this energy in becoming a dentist. Unless you're going to switch careers like me and become a high level break dancer and be paid for that. I don't know how that's going to happen. This is what you do. You dentist, right? You have this skill and protect this skill. I, I like, I like our, our, uh, our, uh, um, a nacho mascot cat cat coming in, Jim. So <laughs> reaching out to you guys, you guys do make things fun. So when you get your, as a kid, we got your tonsils out, you get ice cream, you help somebody move, you get pizza. First of all, someone asked me to move. I'm like, I'm going to skip the moving part. I'll get my own pizza. But you guys have some fun things coming up. What are you doing for a dental school near you? I love your guys' attitude of fun, whether it's the softball t-shirts or this. Share with us what you're doing for a dental school there. So uh, up here in Portland, we're going to do uh, a drive-in movie uh, excursion experience uh, in early September as a welcome to the new st dental students and to say hello to our, you know, old friends that are D2s and 3s and 4s and also invite the local dental community. So uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I love that. And my job, my goal is to break down the barriers between key resources, sponsors, dentists, because we're all people. And what's crazy to me is if it's raining, like I use the example, and someone's trying to sell you an umbrella, you're like, thanks for having these umbrellas available. We have so many key resources inside this dental nachos world where the same thing happens. It's just, unfortunately, dental school does not really bring awareness on this early enough. And it could be banking. It could be disability insurance. It could be how to work with a lab. So I appreciate you guys infusing fun into your world and helping dentists really protect themselves. A story that I'll okay. share as we wrap up is one of my dental nachos, who I know very well, uh, said to me that if he did not buy disability insurance in dental school, this is a long time ago, and he not get, he would not be able to support his family right now because he only can work part time. But he bought a disability insurance policy in dental school. So those stories should inspire you guys to act now, do one thing now, reach out to Jim and Tyler, and learn at least find out what it's going to cost and what process you guys have to go through. So before we jump off, any parting words for the Nacho Verse? I'll let you guys yeah, uh, lead us one off. One other thought, I think you just said something really important, which I think people sometimes forget is dentistry is a relationship business. Right. Whether it's doctor to patient or doctor to vendor, it's a relationship business. And the better those relationships, I think the better they can do with their career. But, you know, as it relates to us, we've spent a ton of time and energy and money and resources building relationships in the dentist, dental community. And, you know, at this point, we're, we're pretty well connected. And, and I think any of our, our clients can certainly be the beneficiary uh, of those relationships, whether it's buying a practice or getting the financing or, you know, the many other things that eventually will happen to them. So I love yeah, it. We need more, we need more good that. people to do more good stuff. Dentistry is a very nacho nuts career. The amount of things you have to do and worry about and get together from associate to practice owner. So you want to protect yourself along the journey, prepare yourself and aware yourself. So thanks Thank so you. much, Jim, Jim and Tyler. Really appreciate it. You can reach out to us at salsadentalnachos.com to learn more about them. And what's the best website for you guys if someone wants to visit and find out more about you? Uh, doctorsdisabilityspecialist.net 
is uh, a nice landing that. page for me and Tyler too. Yeah. Awesome. The Nacho team will connect you. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Paul. Take care.